I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Hey, hey, hold on. Think about this. Are you ready to receive a miracle today? Are you ready for God to show up in your life and meet your needs today? If you are, then join me to pray this prayer. Say, Father, I believe you that you daily load me with benefits. So today I demand the benefit of this day and my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And Father, we honor you today. Thank you for the gift of your spirit who teaches us all things. We open our heart to learn of him today. Thank you. Thank you. For even now, signs and wonders are taking place in the lives of those who are watching and listening. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. We give you praise. And I declare every body is lifted from your life right now. Every yoke I command it to be destroyed now, because of the anointing of God's Spirit has made available. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now we are in John chapter 17. Jesus speaking here in verse 2, he says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And then Jesus said, this is eternal life. What is it? That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom God sent into the world. Not another Jesus. No, not just the name Jesus. There is a particular Jesus he's talking about, that you will know him. And I told you yesterday, there is no way you will know him until he reveals himself to you. So your job in life is to find him. If you don't find him, you don't receive eternal life. You don't find Jesus because the pastor says, if you want to give your life to Christ, come out. You may come out. The pastor may tell you, say this prayer after me. And you finish saying that prayer and tells you, now you are saved. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Jesus is the only one that will save you. No pastor can save you. So even though you came out for the altar call, your heart must be in search to meet Jesus. Now, when you meet him and he begins to open up himself to you, you see, you can be friends with someone for many years without knowing the person. There are people who have gotten married now, that's the closest relationship you can think about. And then they discover many years after marriage that their husband has a family outside or the wife has, um, you know, something. And you wonder, I thought I knew you, but we've been married for 20 years. We've been married for 15 years. What's going on? There are people like that. You really never knew them. And you know why? because they never opened themselves up to you. It's the same thing with Jesus. You can relate with Jesus without knowing him. You can do the things that Jesus wants you to do generally. You say, God does not like this thing. You can do all that and still don't know him. So even though Jesus talks to you, it still doesn't mean you know him. So it's your job to get yourself into that place where he will begin to talk to you about himself. You see, you can cry to the Lord, Lord, help me, help me. And then he says, my son, 
Don't worry, I will help you. You can hear his voice. Yes. You are his son. Yes. You are his daughter. Yes. But that still doesn't mean you know him. Now, we are going to be looking at specific things that will aid you. Because, see, every answer is written in this book. I'm telling you the truth. And then, when you now couple that with your relationship with the Holy Spirit, oh, you are made. Praise God. Now, I want us to look at something here. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, I'm going to start this from, um, from down, then take it up. Mm. So now, we, we found out that until you begin to know Jesus, and how will you know him? When he opens himself up to you. And when he opens himself up to you and you receive that knowledge, that knowledge you're receiving is actually eternal life being ministered to you. And guess what? That's how we grow and defeat the spirit of death. Because when we fully grasp what eternal life is, then we'll defeat the spirit of death. So now I'm reading 2 Peter chapter 2, chapter 1, and I'm reading verse 8. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, For if these things be in you, and abound they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ hold on he says if these things be in you so what's he saying there are certain things that must be in you if those things are in you they will make you those things he's talking about they will make you that you will be you will neither be barren so you will not be barren and be unfruitful in knowing jesus now when you know jesus what is that Eternal life is given to you. So eternal life is not something you receive one day. So I receive Jesus into my life. I receive Jesus. In my life. I receive eternal life. No, that's not how eternal life is given. Eternal life is a progressive life. So the more you know him, the more you, you, you receive eternal life and live it. The more you know him, the more you express eternal life. That's just how it is. So the knowledge of God and Jesus deposited in you, the more you breathe out eternal life. So now he says, if these things, so we're going to look at those things now, praise God. What are those things he's talking about? That he says, if these things be in you, they will make you, th that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to know those things. What about you? So now we go to verse. Hmm. Hmm. Now we look at verse 3. The same chapter 1, 2 Peter. Verse 3 says, According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. So, he has given us access to be partakers of the divine nature. And we only partake of the divine nature through the knowledge of him, the knowledge of his person. And like I said, only him will reveal that knowledge to you. So when Jesus said in John chapter 17, as you have given him power, to give eternal life to as many as you will give. How does he give that eternal life? By revealing himself. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. So when he reveals himself to you, what are you seeing? The life. And when you see the life, you become the life. That's how it works. But now he begins to say these things. He says, Verse, look at verse, verse, now he says in verse 3 that we have been called to glory and virtue. That is glory and excellence. So meaning 
your life ought to improve. There's supposed to be an increase in the virtue in your life. Praise God. Verse 4 says, whereby we are giving, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then he goes on to say, and beside these, giving all diligence or all carefulness, pay close attention. That's what he said. Beside this, paying close attention, giving all diligence, he says, add to your faith virtue. Now, you can have faith, but then your faith is not, there's no beauty to your faith. You can have faith and lack virtue. What is virtue? Virtue simply means excellence, uh, 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 beauty, you see. Making something nice and acceptable. So he says, add this to your faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is uh, your ability to hear and respond to the word of God. So faith is God speaking to you. Remember I said faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Now, when you begin to hear God, faith has started for you. Faith is not what you read in the Bible. That is not faith. Faith only comes when you hear God speak to you. Every other thing else is hope and not faith. But then now he says, look, you have been called to partake in the divine nature. But there is something you must do. He says, giving all diligence. It add every carefulness. Be very diligent in this matter. Add to your faith. Those things you say God used to speak to you about. Add excellence, put some excellence, put some finesse to it. Why? See, you can be hungry, for example, and then you begin to pray to the Lord. And then the Lord will say, son, fear not, I will feed you. Now, when God says, I will feed you, do you know you can be saying, say, Lord, see, eh, if I can just get Gary to drink, I think I'll be fine. And you will get the Gary to drink. But someone else, and that's what he's saying, add this to your faith. And, and you're praying and God says, son, fear not, I will feed you. And he reasons it, if God is going to feed me, oh boy, Lord, I want to eat the food from so-so and so Chinese restaurant. And God will answer you. What did this one do different from the one who said that if I can just drink, Gary? The difference is simple. Excellence. Virtue. So he says, add it. Be deliberate about this. Add virtue to your faith. Because if you don't add this, even though you express faith, it will not be appealing to anyone. Even you... Because sometimes you find believers, people who have been born again for many years, they were sincere. They were sincere with their lives. But after many years, they don't see any color in their lives. And they seem to want to give up. What is missing in them? I'll tell you what is missing. Virtue. They didn't add virtue to their faith. So they remained the same. You see, and, and when you don't add virtue to your faith, Life has a way of making you look expired. If you don't add virtue to your faith, life will make you feel and look expired. So that's why at every stage in your life, you need to do some upgrading. Upgrade your mind, upgrade your way of reasoning. Get involved with things that will make you think about the things you know in another direction. Sometimes, you know, some people just feel the way I know it is the only way. No, it's not the only way. The knowledge might be one, but the expression of that knowledge can be in multiple ways. Same truth, but expressed in different ways. That's the truth. 
So you open your heart to learn something new. You open your heart to, to, to just, look, life can be better. Life can be better. If God gave you a bicycle by faith, you know, look, I can tell you the testimony of this bicycle. Hey, get to that point after riding that bicycle for a while. Say, come on, if God can bring a bicycle, he can actually bring a car for me. And say, Lord, let's talk about a car. Now, what are you doing? You are adding virtue to your faith. And let me tell you the truth. He will do it. Praise God. Yeah, because our time is up today. Praise God. Listen, think about this. Add it. Add it. Add it. And make your life better. Why would your life be better? Because God is going to give you what you add. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. And right now I pray that the Spirit of God will guide you through this day. And bring a miracle in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bye.